As we've previously reported on theCUBE, Alation was an early pioneer in the data, data governance, and data management space, which is now rapidly evolving with the help of AI and machine learning and to what's often referred to as data intelligence. Many companies, you know, they didn't make it through the last era of data. They failed to find the right product market fit or scale beyond their close circle of friends or some ran out of money or got acquired. Alation is a company who did make it through and has continued to attract investor support, even in a difficult market where tech IPOs have virtually dried up. Back with me on theCUBE is Satyan Sangani, who's the CEO and co-founder of Alation. Satyan, good to see you again. Thanks for coming on. Great to see you, Dave. It's always nice to be on theCUBE. Hey, so remind our audience why you started Alation 10 years ago, you and your co-founders, and, and you know, what you're all about today. Alation's vision is to empower a curious and rational world, which sounds like a really, um, I think, presumptuous thing to say. Uh, but I think it's something that we really need, right? If you if you think about how people make decisions, often it's still with bias or ideology. And we think a lot of that happens because people are intimidated by data or often don't know how to use it or don't know how to think scientifically. And we, at the core, started Alation because we wanted to demystify data for people. We wanted to help people find the data they needed and allow them to use it and to understand it better. And all of those core consumption values around information were what led us to start the company because we felt like the world of data could be a little easier to use and manage. Well, your founding premise was correct. I mean, it, just getting the, the technology to work was, was so hard. And as you well know, it takes you know seven to 10 years to actually start a company and, and get uh, traction, let alone hit escape velocity. So as I said in the open, you're continuing to attract new investors. What's the funding news? Please share with us. So we're announcing that we raised 123 million from a cohort of investors led by Toma Bravo, Sonnenbill Investments, and Costa Noa. Uh, Databricks Ventures is a participant in that round along with uh, many of our other existing investors which would also include Salesforce uh, amongst others. And so super excited to get the round done in this interesting market. Uh, we were able to do that because of the business performance and it was an up round and all of that's great and gives our employees and our customers the fuel they need to get the product that they want. So why the E round? Explain that. So we've been accelerating growth over the last five quarters since our Series D. We've basically increased our growth rate to almost double since the time we raised our last round. And from our perspective, the data intelligence market, which is the market that we think we have the opportunity to continue to be the leading platform in, is growing super fast. And when faced with the decision of decelerating growth in the face of what might be, uh, what could be a challenging macroeconomic environment, and accelerating when we're seeing customers increase the size of their commitments, more new customers sign on than ever, our growth rate's increasing. We, we and the board basically chose to take the latter approach. And we sort of said, look, this is amazing time in this category. This is an amazing time in this company. It's time to invest and it's time to be aggressive when a lot of other folks are fearful and a lot of other folks aren't seeing the traction that we're seeing in our business. Why do you think you're seeing that traction? Is it, I mean, we always talk about digital transformation, which was a buzzword before the pandemic, but now it's become a mandate. Is, is that why? Is it just more data related? Explain that if you could. I think there's this potentially you know, somewhat confusing thing about data. There, there's a, maybe it's a dirty secret of data, which is there's the sense that if you have a lot of data and you're using data really well and you're producing a ton of data that you might be good at managing it. And the reality of it is that as you have more people using data and as you produce da more data, it just becomes more and more confusing because more and more people are trying to access the same information to answer different questions and, and more workloads are produced and more applications are produced. And so the idea of getting more data actually means that it's really hard to manage and it becomes harder to manage at scale. And so what we're seeing is that with the advent of platforms like AWS, like Snowflake, like Databricks, and certainly with all of the different on-premise applications that are getting born every single day, we're just seeing that data is becoming really much more confusing but being able to navigate it is so much more important because it's the lifeblood for any business to 
build differentiation and satisfy their customers. Yeah, so last time we talked, we talked about, you know, the volume and velocity bromide from the last decade, but we talked about value mm -hmm. and how hard it is to get value. So that's really the issue is the need and desire from organizations to get more value out of that data is actually a stronger tailwind than the headwinds that you're seeing in the macroeconomic environment. Right, because I think in good times you need data in order to be able to capitalize off all the opportunities that you've got. But in bad times, you've got to make hard choices. And when you need to make hard choices, how do you do that? Well, you've got to figure out what the right decisions are. And the best way to do that is to have a lot of data and a lot of people who understand that data to be able to capitalize on it and make better insights and better decisions. And so, you know, you, 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 and you don't see that just by the way, theoretically. In the last quarter, we've seen three companies that have had cost reductions and force reductions where they are increasing at the same time their investment with relation. And it's because they need the insight in order to be able to navigate these challenging times. Well, congratulations on the up round. That's awesome. I, I, I got to ask you, what was it like, you know, raise, doing a raise in this environment? I mean, sellers are in control in, in the public markets, you know, late stage SaaS companies, that had to be challenging. You know, how did you go about this? What were the investor conversations like? It certainly was a challenging fundraise. I, you know, and I and I would say even though our business is doing way better and we were able to attract a valuation that you know would put us in the top quartile of 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 public companies where we trading as a public company, which you know we aspire to do at some point, it was challenging because there was a whole slew of investors who were basically sitting on their hands. I had one investor conversation where an investor said to me, you know, look, like we think you're a great business, but we have companies that are giving able to give us, you know, 2.5 liquidation preference. And that gives us 70%, 75% of our return day one. So we're just going to go do those companies that may have been previously overvalued, but are willing to give us these terms because they want to keep their face valuation. Other investors said, look, we'd really rather that you ran a less lower growth plan, but with a potentially lower burn plan. Um, but we think the upside is really something that you can capitalize on. You know, from our perspective, we were pretty clear about the plan that we wanted to run and didn't want to necessarily totally accommodate to the fashion of, of the current market. We've always run a historically uh, efficient business. The company has not burned as much as many of the data peers that we've seen to grow to get to our scale. But our general view was, look, we've got a really clear plan. The board and the company and the management team know exactly what we'd like to do. We've got customers that know exactly what they want from us. So we really just have to go execute. And uh, the luck is that we found investors who were willing to do that, uh, many investors. And you know, we put, picked one in Toma Bravo that we felt could be the best partner for the coming phase of the company. So I love that because you 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 see the opportunity. You've had a, a very efficient business. You're punching above your weight in terms of your use of capital. So you don't want to veer off your, your, you know your business better than anybody. You don't want to veer off that, that plan. The board's very supportive. I could see, uh, you hear it all the time. We're going to dial down the growth, dial up the EBIT. And, and, and that's what markets want today. Uh, so congratulations on, on sticking to your, your beliefs and your vision. How do you plan to use the funds? We are planning to invest in sales and marketing globally. So we've expanded in uh, Asia Pacific over the most recent year and also in EMEA, and we plan to continue to do that. We're going to continue to expand in public sector uh, with Fed. And so you would see us basically just increase our presence globally uh, in all of the markets that you might expect. In particular, you're going to see us lean in heavily to uh, many of the partners Databricks invested alongside this particular round, uh, but you would have seen previously that Snowflake was a fabulous and has been a fabulous partner of ours. And we're going to continue to invest alongside these leading data platforms. What you would also expect to see from us though is a lot of investment in R&D. This is a really nascent category. It's a really, really hard space. People would call it a crowded market because there are a lot of players. I think from our perspective, our aspiration is to be the leading data intelligence platform. Platform being a really key word there because it's not like we can do it all ourselves. We have a lot of different use cases in data intelligence, things like 
data quality and data observability, things like data privacy and data access control. And we have some really great partners that we walk alongside in order to make the end customer successful. I think a lot of folks in this market think, oh, we can just be master of all, you know, sort of jack of all trades, master of none. That is not our strategy. Our strategy is to really focus on getting our customers super successful, really focused on engagement and adoption, because the really hard thing with these platforms is to get people to use them. And that is not a problem Malaysia has had historically. It was really interesting, Sajin. You talk about, I mean, Toma Bravo, obviously, you know, very savvy investors, deep pockets. They've been making some moves. Certainly we've seen that in cybersecurity and, and data. So you got some you know, quasi patient capital there. But the, the interesting thing to me is that the, the previous Snowflake investment, you know, last uh, year and now Databricks, a lot of people think of them as sort of, you know, battling it out, but it's not, my view is it's not a zero sum game, you know, meaning, you know, yes, there's, there's overlap, but, but, it, but they're, they're filling a lot of gaps in the marketplace. And I think there's room, there's so much opportunity and there's such a large TAM that partnering with both is a really, really smart idea. I'll give you the, the last word, you know, going forward, what can we expect from Alation? Well, I think that's absolutely true. And I think that the biggest boogeyman with all of this is that people don't use data. And so our ability to partner together is really just a function of making customers successful and continuing to do that. And if we can do that, all companies will grow. You know, we ended up ultimately um, partnering with Databricks and doing and deepening our partnership really, because we had one already primarily because of the fact that we have over a hundred customers that are jointly using the products today. And so it certainly made sense for us to continue to make that experience better because customers are demanding it. Uh, you know, from my perspective, we just have this massive opportunity. We have the ability and the insight to run a really efficient, very, very high growth business at scale. And we have this tremendous ability to get so many more companies and people to use data much more efficiently and much better, which, you know, broadly is I think a way in which we can impact the world in a really positive way. And so that's a once in a lifetime opportunity for, for me and for the team and we're just going to get after it. Well, it's been fun watching Elation over the years. I remember you know, mid last decade talking about this thing called data lakes and how they became data swamps and you were helping clean that up. And now, you know, the, the next 10 years is not going to, and data is not going to be like the last, you know, simplifying things and, and really democratizing data is, is the big theme. Satyam, thanks for making time to come back on theCUBE and congratulations on, on the raise. Thank you, Dave, it's always great to see you. And thank you for watching this conversation with the CEO on theCUBE, your leader in enterprise and emerging tech coverage.